If you're looking to choose a harness for your dog, it can be confusing because there's so many different types. There's two big questions that you need to have answered. That is, which is the best fit for your dog and how can you train your dog to love it? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to check when you've got the right fit, things to consider regarding the design and the construction of the harness. And watch this video right to the end because I'm gonna share with you some games to teach your dog how to love the harness. If you're new to the channel and you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. When it comes to looking for a harness for your dog, to get the best fit is really, really important. There are lots of videos that I see on the internet where a dog is wearing a harness and it is a really poor fit, or it's just not suitable for that size of dog, that type of dog, and the contact points that the harness is hitting is actually restricting the dog or it's just not a good fit. It is so important to get the right fit. So let's have a look at things that you need to check to make sure you've got the best fitting harness. I've got a couple of harnesses here that I use for my own dogs. These are a very similar design but at the same time very different. The dog's head goes through this bit. This portion at the top lies across the dog's back this chest piece here goes under the front of the dog, underneath the rib cage, and then these clip either side. Now it's good to have a harness that does clip or undo either at two points here or all of the points. And there are some harnesses on the market that do that. First of all, the harness needs to be a comfortable fit um, and should sit around the dog's shoulders not high up on, on here like this and not too low down. It might sit way too low and that can be a problem because then you start to run over the joint where the shoulder moves as they walk or run. And if this lies in a position that's too low, it will impede the movement of the dog. So that's why it's important that you don't go too low down here. And I see that that's a common problem. The chest piece goes underneath the dog like this and then clips either side and again this is a well-used harness and we're out in this you know most days we don't always wear a harness but we're looking for a comfortable fit not too tight and certainly not too loose a lot of fittings i see are too loose and the whole thing spins around so check if you have a harness check that that isn't too loose Make sure it's a snug fit, but you should be able to get your fingers comfortably underneath. If it's too short here, that can happen. And you end up with a, a harness that rubs the armpit of the dog. It is uncomfortable, it's painful, it can actually hurt the dog. And it, that would be the incorrect fit. Each dog is different, each breed is different. My dog's got a really slim head. It's easy to get this harness over her head and get it off but there is no way that if you had a breed that has a big broad head you know a rottweiler any of the bull terrier breeds any of the bull breeds any of their mastiff breeds they've got very large strong heads and there is no way that they would get their head through something like that that's where a more specifically designed for bigger breed harnesses are much better or a harness that actually unclips at the front here they're not having to put their head through like that and when it comes to good fit it's important that you look where the attachment points are for the actual lead so this one here has got what we call a back clip harness where you can attach a lead onto this loop here but it's also got a front loop so that we can actually attach the lead to the front of the chest if we want to, or we can attach to both points if we want to. Some harness designs have an attachment point here and some of them clip round here and attach here. And that can be uncomfortable for some dogs if something is pinching around here and it's up high at the base of the neck between the shoulder blades. Further back, 
is much better. So look out for that when you are making a choice of harness for your dog. Two points of attachment are far better. If there's more, that's better. If there's only one, you really do restrict your options as to how you can control the dog, especially if you're learning and you're teaching them the early stages of walking on lead. Fit wise, I prefer a design that goes down the center of the chest like this. A lot of harnesses are actually designed to come across the front here. And I do not recommend that you get one of those. It impedes the movement of the articulating shoulder joint on both sides and it is just not good for the natural movement of the dog. And I see it again where people are struggling to walk on lead with the dog and they have a harness that is coming across the front of the shoulders here. So before I even address how our dogs walk on lead, if we're wearing a harness, I'm gonna look, is the harness a good fit? Is it going to impede their movement at any point? And are there any points that are gonna cause our dogs pain, irritation, rubbing, discomfort of any sort. So a good fit, not too low on the shoulders, not too tight round the neck, snug but comfortable round the rib cage. You also need to take into consideration the natural shape of, of the breed of your dog. So I've already mentioned those dogs with bigger heads, they need a different design, specifically designed to accommodate the large head size of that breed. Your dog might fall into the sight hound category of dogs where they have very slim heads, deep chests, they can be very tall dogs, long in the body and you might have to get a custom fit harness or a harness that is specifically designed for that type of breed. There are companies on the internet. I'll put a link in the description below this video. Next, let's take a look at the design and construction of a harness. So we do a lot of outdoor type activities. So when I'm looking for a good harness for my dogs, then I'm looking for something that's hard wearing and that's suitable for the outdoor environment. <laughs> good girl. So you know, my, one of my favorites is this particular harness. You'll see it around a lot. It's by a company called Roughwear, and um, it really is a popular harness, but I really do recommend it. First of all, the fit. It is a very good fit and it's very robust material. It's hard wearing in the outdoors. We go over rough terrain. If it gets wet, it doesn't get too heavy. And I'll show you the difference between this harness and the other harness that I do have. If it does get wet, it doesn't matter too much and it does dry off pretty quickly. But the D-ring on the back is really substantial. It's really sturdy. And when I want to clip onto it, I know that I've got a solid fitment the size of the clips. These are plastic. These are the right size for the right size of harness. Sometimes they're way too small and they're very flimsy. You do not want clips that are likely under strain going to just snap and break because you would uh, run into a risk of your dog escaping from the harness. And if you don't have good recall or good control with your dog, then that will present a problem. So make sure the clips are substantial, they're strong, and they can take the weight of your dog. The other reason I like this is the front clip. It's not a metal clip, but it is very, very hard wearing and it's really robust. And it is a good solid anchor point that I can attach to the front should I want to. And also the really cool thing is when they are not on lead, it's really comfortable for them running about. They can move around easy and they don't feel uncomfortable in that harness. Comparing that to another harness I have, which I do like, it's a really lovely fit, and I'll give you a demonstration of that in a second. Um, but good size clips, really strong, even though my dog is quite small, she's not a particularly heavy dog, around about a 10 kilo dog, but they are very strong size clips. I have bought harnesses like this before, where the, again, the clips have been too small, actually. I'd be looking for a stronger clip too flimsy for some dogs, whereas this is a nice strong clip. This has got webbing material, but it's also got a fleece backing to that, which increases the width of the webbing material. Webbing material alone can be comfortable if it's a good fit. They can rub and they can be not very comfortable if it's not a good fit or a good design. So these fleecy backings on each of the parts 
does spread the weight and makes for a much more comfortable harness. And this harness goes on exactly the same way as the other harness. It's just a slightly different design. The arms aren't impeded by the front. There's no strap going across the front. It goes underneath the chest and comes across the top with an attachment point, nice and far back, really comfortable for the dog. Most dogs will quite happily wear a harness, especially if it's the right design and the right fit. With every dog, it's always a good idea to get them used to putting a harness on and off. You can really get into a knot with yourself trying to get a harness on for the first time. I'm gonna show you a couple of simple games now that you can play to make the whole process of putting a harness on really easy and also Get your dog to love the harness. So to start off with, to get my dogs comfortable with a harness, I don't use a harness at all. What I do is get my dog comfortable with being touched all over their body. So we do this a lot, even today, my dogs are older now, but I get them used to being handled and touched all over their body. I'll touch their ears, their head, their face. I'll rub my hands gently down the body, down the back, underneath. I'll get them used to me lifting up each paw and actually running my hands down the legs on both sides. Really, really lovely. Now, some people might say to you, every time you touch them, give them a bit of food. Now you can do that, but if you do it in a nice way and they enjoy it, then I don't really need food to reinforce the touch because the touch is nice already. It's reinforcing in itself. And actually, if I stop, does she move away or does she want a bit more? She actually likes it. So actually the touch element of it is um, really enjoyable to her and she, she, does enjoy, she does enjoy it. So I might actually touch the back legs as well. Now this will help you when you go for vets checks as well, but I get my dogs used to all of this. I'll maybe pick a paw up. <clears throat> but just being handled in general, because the harness sits around really most of the vital organs of the, do <laughs> of the dog's body. So there's a lot going on in there and some dogs are quite touch sensitive and maybe find it uncomfortable. So actually getting them comfortable being handled, being touched in general is a first step for me getting my dog loving the harness. Now the next game is super simple. And again, we're not gonna start with the harness. We're going to start with something else other than the harness. And we're just gonna get our dogs used to putting their heads through something because that can be really quite a challenge for them. So first things first, I'm just gonna use a lead. I've just looped a lead. Make a big, big loop in the lead so that, um, so that dog can easily put the head through the hole. So all we're doing is getting our dogs used to putting their head through something. Now your temptation will be to immediately get your dog to put the head through it, but please don't. Put your arm through, I'm gonna use a little bit of food for my dog and I'm just gonna feed her there. I'm gonna feed her there and give her a little bit of food there. Now, this time, as she's eating, I'm just going to move that backwards and forwards. I'm just using her daily food here. Good girl. Food, bring it over. Bring it back, another bit of food. Really easy. I'm gonna take the food to her. Good girl. Bring that over and back. A lot of dogs do not like things going over their heads. It's not comfortable for them. So just take it really, really gently. But a nice big loop like that makes it really a much, much easier type of action it's not as intimidating it's not like trying to get this little tiny loop over their heads so i'm taking my hand through good now this time i'm going to see if she'll come through good girl and put her head, her head through so this time good girl bit of food take it over her head so instead of me putting the food through I'm gonna hold it here. 
She'll bring her head through. Nice. Good girl. And then take the, take the lead away. Nice. Good girl. Until she starts to actually be really, really comfortable. Yeah, clever girl. Now you want to gradually make that a little bit shorter of a loop, but essentially we're building confidence each time we do that. So yeah, nice. I'll put it away, nice. Just get used to going over the top and back again, over the top and back again. Really comfortable. Okay, so now we're moving on. Is she comfortable? putting her head through this. So I'm going to start off again. So just feeding her and then taking this closer and bringing it a little bit at a, at a, at a time till eventually I just pull uh, the harness completely through. Good girl. This time she's coming through with her head. She's going to get lots of rewards for that. Lots of rewards for that. Good girl. And then just pop it back. And I've got two or three bits each time. So I'll hold it up. Now she's actually putting her head through quite happily. Good girl. Till I can just sit it on her shoulders like that. Now really, really simple games. And my advice is to play these games for just like a minute at a time maybe even 30 seconds at a time. It doesn't have to be a long period of time. It really is small, short sessions and you can do them two, three, four times in a day easily. You could do it even while you're watching the TV and you want to play a little game with your dog. This is a perfect little mini game to play inside the house. Now, initially I put the harness on them and just let them wear it for a little bit around the house. Let them get comfortable with it and I'll maybe play a few little games with the harness on. I'm not making it a thing about the harness, it's just me playing. I might perhaps play a little bit of tug with my dog. Some sort of way to play with my dog while they're wearing the harness. And then after a few minutes, I'll just unclip the harness, take it off and then set it aside and play that game another day. So you've got three ideas to help your dog love the harness. Getting them used to being touched first and foremost, and that will help you just generally, not just with the harness, but with vet checks and any other circumstances where you need to put hands on your dog. It's a really good game to play, very gentle, very easy to do, um, and you can definitely do that game also while you're watching TV or listening to a podcast or whatever it is you love to do. You've then got the head in game where we're holding a loop, they are getting confident with the loop going over their head backwards and forwards. And by all means, go back and check that video again before you just dive into the game. Go back, rewatch it, and then do it. So watch it, then do it. Don't worry about being perfect. And if you're not sure, just go back, rewatch it again, and do it again. Because for sure, if it's the first time you've ever played a game like that, then sometimes you need a little reminder. And I find visual learning easier, so I'm hoping that what I've shown you here in the video is going to be really useful. You can just go back and check it at any time. The third thing you can do to help your dog really love the harness is once you've got the harness on, is to play a little game with them just anyway. It's not necessarily always associated with going out for a walk. What we're really looking to do is get our dogs comfortable with wearing a harness, and then later we're looking to go out on a walk with them in the harness. If you've already got a harness for your dog, go and check against my tips around the fit. You might need to adjust your harness so that it fits a bit better. Let me know in the comments if you have had to do that. And if you're looking for recommendations, then don't forget, I'm gonna put some links in the description below so that you can check out some of my recommendations. If you've never played games with your dog before, it might be a completely new concept to you. If you want to learn more about game-based training, what makes it different and how it can really work for you, I've got a free web class. All you need to do is click the link in the description below. That link gives you instant access to the free web class. And it means you can dive deeper into how games can really help you and your dog. If you found this video useful, share it with a friend, give it a thumbs up. 
And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button, click the bell, make sure you get notified of any future videos. And I'll see you in the next video.